Hey kids, it's the best of Fly here, hope you're well. Out on a uh, bit of bog standard vlogish today, out re-familiarising myself with the big old uh, GS. And of course, you know it's going to be one of my vlogs because it's got a white van in front of me already. Outrageous. Anyway, stick around, stay tuned. Let's get on and have a chat. Okay, so here I am on an absolutely beautiful winter's day. It's uh, seven degrees according to the sat-nav. Pretty chilly out and out, but uh, a lovely bright sunny day. Too good to not come out on one of my uh, regular lunchtime rides. And the main reason for doing it really is because, uh, well, I just haven't been out on my GS for absolutely ages, it seems. I've not ridden it a great deal since I came back from the Norway tour because, uh, number one, I've been borrowing lots of other people's bikes and uh, I've just kind of felt it my duty to ride the socks off those so I can give you proper reviews of them. And uh, I've been riding my other bikes quite a lot as well. But, as I've often said, if I could only have one bike, it would be the GS. It is, uh, therefore, probably, don't let my other bikes hear me say this, but probably my favourite bike of the four that I own. Right, it's going that way, so I'm going to go this way. Unbelievable that I've already got a white van in this video. Can't believe it. Anyway. So, partly, I wanted to re-familiarise myself with what this uh, R1200 GS feels like. I bought this at the back end of 2013. It's a... Uh, 2014 model year. I bought this at the end of the BMW financial year. It was uh, around about Christmas time that year. And uh, I thought I'd buy it then because I might get a reasonable deal. I got a reasonable deal but not a cracking one but uh, but there you go. But since then I've fitted it with all sorts of uh, trinkets to make it my own including the heated seat that I'm uh, enjoying at the moment. And overall the bike has cost me I reckon well around about 18, 19,000 pounds. But of course, if I were to sell it, it would get nowhere near that. It would probably get, I don't know, without looking, probably about £10,000. The reason I mention that is because uh, I have been lucky enough of late to ride a few new GSs. The new, bother, Volvo. The uh, new 1250 GS, the standard bike. And then uh, last week, you may have seen my video of the new uh, GS Adventure, the 1250. Both absolutely lovely, lovely bikes. And having ridden those two, I got the uh, predictable questions. Well, are you going to chop in your GS and buy one of these then, one of the new bikes? And also, the other question that comes up a lot is, which would you buy, the Adventure or the standard bike? So, uh, whilst I'm out on this little lunchtime ride, let's address those two questions. Oh, bother, the Volvo's going the same way as me. Wow, what a glorious day. You've got to make the most of these. Oh. Opportunity knocks. Who said the 1200 needed more power? <laughs> anyway, so to those two questions, am I going to chop in my uh, 2014 model year bike with the 2019 model year bike? Well, the straightforward answer is no. Uh, that's not because the new bikes aren't better in every way, which they certainly are but mainly because the new bikes are very expensive. To buy one with the uh, sort of spec that this bike's got, if I bought the TE spec of this, of the standard bike, it would cost me around about, give or take, £18,000. Sell this for 10 means I've got to find another eight grand uh, in order to do that upgrade. Are the improvements on the new 1250 worth eight grand of my money? Well, in the old days, maybe they would have been, but these days, I no longer work. I uh, retired a couple of years ago retired in quotes because I still run a couple of businesses and of course I do this YouTube game so I'm pretty busy but anyway the point is I don't have as much money as I used to have so eight grand to me is quite a lot of money that in fact is almost a new Kawasaki Z900 RS a bike that I really liked and there are other bikes for less than 10 grand that I really like and I think I get more value out of another bike in the shed than I would on just upgrading my GS. So that's the that's the simple answer to that. I would, of course I would like the new GS, but it's not worth the eight grand I'd have to find in order to upgrade. If, however, I was in the market for a, an adventure style bike and I didn't already have one, then uh, certainly out of the adventure style bikes I've ridden, the uh, Multistradas, the KTMs, etc., uh, then it would be the GS, the new GS that I'll be going for. Which leads on to that second question. Which GS would you have? Would it be the standard GS or the GS Adventure? 
as he gets stuck behind another couple of white vans. Just passing here by the way on my left, Chequers, the uh, British Prime Minister's uh, country home where it all started, all this uh, Brexit fandango back in July when they came up with the Chequers deal, that's where that happened anyway, let's not get sucked into that disaster. Anyway, where was I? Yes, white vans and uh, which should I go for, the standard GS or the GSA? Well, in my case, if money were no object and I were going to upgrade, I might be tempted to go for the GSA because I've never had one and I have had this bike for, what, four or five years now. So it would be something a little bit different for me. On the other hand, if I thought about it logically, I'd probably go for the standard GS for all the reasons that I went for the standard GS when I bought this one. Notwithstanding when I bought this one, the adventure version of this bike wasn't it out because they used to release the GS Adventure about a year later than the standard bike. Uh, and this was the new liquid cooled or water cooled machine partial water cooled machine that came out as I say around that time and the adventure wasn't actually on the market but I could have waited for the adventure and I decided not to I went for the standard bike and the reason why I went for the standard bike was because the advantages of the adventure were things like the extra fuel tank uh, well I don't need the extra fuel in this country there's plenty of fuel stations I can get 200 210 miles out of this tank on the standard bike that's ample that's the best of any motorcycle that I own uh, so I don't really need the bigger fuel tank I certainly don't need the additional weight that that adds if you're full up with fuel and it's a slightly heavier bike anyway so for me the weight penalty was more important than the additional fuel so that's why I went for the standard bike and then allied to that there are another couple of reasons why I went for the standard bike I just thought that it looked a little bit sharper I've changed my mind slightly about that now I quite like the look of the adventure both uh, styles of GS have grown on me over the years I quite like the purposeful look of both of them now and I do appreciate that on the adventure you've got a bigger front end so you've got more wind protection uh, which would be quite nice but that said I've never felt that the wind protection on this bike was bad by any means it's got a quite a big frontal area I'm sat in a bubble of calm here now with this screen with the MRA uh, Vario screen on it I get no buffeting so I don't need the extra wind protection either and what I certainly don't like about the adventure is all that scaffolding on the back uh, in order to uh, mount up the big Charlie and Ewan aluminium round the world type boxes so I don't need that uh, I do like panniers and top boxes or the ability to carry them and for me the BMW Vario cases are great uh, they've got a much neater system they fold down much smaller so you can still filter easily with them and when they're not on the bike the bike looks nice and clean it's not laden with scaffolding and those reasons why I chose this back then and those reasons still hold true so other than the fact I've not owned an, owned an adventure and I might want to try one just for a change logic would dictate that I get the standard bike and of course if you buy the standard bike in TE spec it's about two grand less than the adventure so if money was an object which it is then uh, it's also better value for money so I think I've talked myself into having the standard bike again also if I were to buy one I think uh, the colour scheme I'd go for would be the Rally, I think it looks great and I think it looks better on the standard bike than it does on the Adventure. Anyway, these are all my reasons for preferring the standard bike over the Adventure. You may have some other reasons, but that's kind of my thinking on it. Oh, another white van. This might be a little opportunity actually to quickly nip by. Is it sensible? Yeah, solid. And actually that's quite a good little demo of, uh, you know, the reasons why you'd want to upgrade to a 1250 are really the new engine, more power, and the shift cam technology. But frankly, I don't have any lack of power in my day-to-day -day riding on this bike. When I want to overtake like I just did there, there's absolutely loads of go in this bike. I don't need any more power. And not only that, this bike now is thoroughly run in. I've done uh, over 20,000 miles on this bike now. The, the quick shifter works quite nicely. It's really not that more less uh, smooth than the one on the new bikes. One of the things that the new bikes has going for them are that they're a bit smoother around the quick shifter. Well, once you've worn them in, they become quite smooth. I don't have the TFT display, and I do like the TFT display on the Beamer, but that ain't a deal breaker for me because with the sat nav, as I've got here with the um, you know speed etc already marked on it, it effectively is a TFT. I can read that fine, I've always complained that I can't read the speed very well on the uh, on the actual speedo, but if you've got the sat-nav as well, then that, that issue goes away. This is the beautiful old town of Wendover. The highest town in the Chilterns, and in fact the, uh, the hill in the background there are known as Wendover Woods, and that's the uh, highest point in the Chilterns. Anyway, just a bit of uh, 
local intel as I potter through here. Where was I? Yeah, so, um, so the TFT is not a deal breaker for me either. I'm quite happy to live with this display setup. I know how it works. There's less to go wrong. No one's going to hack at it with a hacksaw to get my uh, old fashioned analog display off. So uh, I'm not going to lose any sleep over the fact that I don't have the TFT, although, you know, it is a nice looking bit of kit, I agree. Oh look, there's one white van pulls away, another smaller one pulls out. Goodness me, this has got to be some sort of a record. Is that, uh, how many is that, this vlog? Four white vans in about ten minutes? I know I'm always going on about white vans and I have nothing against white van drivers. I know the British economy runs on small businesses and we need white vans. In fact, if I'm honest, I quite like a white van myself. Oh look, there's another one up ahead as well, there's two ahead now, having one just turned off. My issue with them is that they're always out on the roads whenever I'm out on the bike and they always block my view. That's my beef with them. Don't have a go at me about that. Oh, the old heated grips and the heated seat is an absolute winning combination on a day like today. If I had all day spare, which sadly I haven't, because I've got to do some uh, some editing actually, then on a day like this you can ride all day long on the GS and you're perfectly comfortable. Another reason why it's such a great bike to have. So I guess the moral of my little story is if you fancy a GS and you want a big and adventure bike and you haven't got the money to buy the brand new latest, greatest and best, then do not despair. You can get a four or five year old one. If you get one that's been looked after, then they're still great, great bikes. I absolutely love mine. We've been through too much together for me to part with it. There's something about that as well, isn't there? There's something to be said for the sort of history you have with the bike. In a way, because I've had this bike for so long now and done had such great trips on it, we sort of share a bit of history, so it'd be a bit sad to see it go. So even if money was no object, maybe, you know, maybe I would think twice about buying a new one. Who knows? Anyway, an interesting thought experiment to ponder. This is the first uh, ride out I think I've done just for the hell of it since I came back from my latest Spain trip. I haven't actually posted uh, my latest Spain trip yet to the channel. Well, certainly not the time I'm recording this. Who knows, by the time I post this, maybe I will have done. I think probably not. But when you go away and do those rides in places like Spain or the Canary Islands and you have those fantastic, one, warm days and the brilliant empty roads, it really does spoil you because when you come back to the southeast, I'm not even in a particularly busy part of the southeast. You know, I'm between uh, Amersham and Aylesbury at the moment, a sleepy part of the world. Yet yeah, I'm still stuck in this sort of traffic. It just. Uh, really does spoil your enjoyment of riding. Anyway, don't really want to end on a downer. Oh, and that van's gone now. Look, there's a there's something to be optimistic about. Right, my stomach is telling me at 12 o'clock it's time I headed back. I made myself a spot of lunch. It's been thoroughly great to come out again on the old GS. Reacquaint myself with her. Look how smooth this gearbox is. How much power do you need on a bike? An absolute corking machine. No need to be changing this yet. It's reaffirmed in my mind. Brilliant bike, love them. Man, that sun's bright. Alrighty, that's it for now. Silly little vlog, really, but I hope you've enjoyed that. I look forward to speaking to you again soon. Until then, this has been the Missenden Fly. Cheerio. Cheerio, white van.